So how do we shoot 3D? Well, there are two principal ways of shooting 3D, parallel and converged. Uh, parallel, as the name implies, means that the cameras always remain parallel to each other. And with converged shooting, the cameras are actually pointed at the subject of interest, or at least pointed at the subject that will appear to be on the screen plane, remembering that the screen plane is the surface of the screen. When you shoot converged, anything closer to the cameras than the convergence point will appear to be in front of the screen, in the negative space, and anything behind or to the rear of the convergence point will appear to be behind the screen. So this actually makes shooting very easy because if you have a 3D monitor on the set, it really is what you see is what you get. You will have a convergence point, you'll have some things appearing to be on the screen, some in front and some behind, and it's pretty much what your end program will look like. Now parallel shooting on the other hand is different because there is no convergence point or in effect the convergence point is at infinity. Uh, much like if our eyes were looking at stars in the night sky they would be pretty much parallel. So you can consider for parallel shooting that your convergence point is in effect at infinity. So if your convergence point is at infinity that means that everything in your shot must be in front of that. So everything must be in front of the screen or coming out of the screen into your negative space. And this actually makes monitoring on set very difficult because it, it just looks wrong most of the time. Everything's coming out of the screen whether that's how you want it or not. Because when you shoot parallel, you set your convergence point in post-production. In post, in the edit suite, in your production studio, you would do something called a horizontal image translation, or HIT, H-I-T, where basically you take the image from the left camera and shift it to the right, and you take the image from the right camera and shift it to the left. And by doing that, you can set your convergence point in post-production. Now you can modify your convergence point from something that's been shot converged in the same way in post. But when you shoot parallel, you have to do it. And you have to do it for every single shot. And in order to be able to manipulate the images and move them left and right, you have to zoom into the images and crop into them. So there will be some loss of quality. If you're shooting uh, with 19, 20, 10, 80 cameras, like these Sony F3s that I've got on the rig here, then you're going to crop into that image maybe by up to 10% and that will result in a loss of resolution. A small loss, but nevertheless a loss of resolution. Now if you're using uh, Red Epics on this rig or something like that shooting at 4K, then you can crop into that much more easily and still have an HD image at full resolution. So for some productions there may be advantages to shooting in 4K even if your final product is only going to be an HD film. But however you look at it, shooting parallel does require more post-production work because the convergence point for every single shot has to be done uh, manually in post. That may be an advantage because it does allow you to do things like pulling convergence where you could actually animate the convergence point in the edit suite and, and change it mid-shot very easily, very simply, with a simple DVE type move in the edit suite. So there are pros and cons to shooting parallel. The onset monitoring is harder. Uh, monitors like the Transvideo Cine monitors um, are very good because they have horizontal image shift, uh, horizontal image translation built into them. So you can actually do that horizontal image translation on set. Um, some of the converter boxes that you can get like the Blackmagic uh, HD-Link uh, 3D, that can do a horizontal image translation as well. So there are ways around it on set, but generally speaking, parallel shooting is a little harder to monitor on set. Whereas shooting converged, as I say, it's pretty much what you see is what you get. But shooting converged has problems of its own. 
because the cameras are converged, because they're both pointing in, in different directions with that convergence, it does mean that if you have too much convergence, too great an angle on the cameras, it's very easy to end up with excessive disparity. It's much easier to end up with a disparity problem with too much disparity because of too much convergence when you shoot converged than when you shoot parallel. So you have to be very careful. Also, if you're using maybe a side-by-side -side rig or cameras with a large separation, more than 50 millimeters or so, and they're shooting converged with a large convergence angle, you may end up with something called keystoning where the left and the right images are keystone, so they're, they're sort of a rhomboid shape because the cameras are looking at two slightly different angles at the object, and then that will need correcting in post-production. So pros and cons to both methods of shooting. And one more issue actually that I'd forgot to mention with shooting parallel is that because you're cropping into the image, because in effect you're zooming in and you're magnifying the image a little bit, you need to take that into account when you're doing your calculations for your on-screen disparity. Because as you zoom into that image, your disparity will increase. So you have to be a little bit careful how you monitor, because you may be measuring your disparity on your nice 3D monitor, your transvideo monitor or whatever, on set, only to find that when you then do your horizontal image translation and crop into that image, your disparity has increased and gone beyond the limits that you're working to. So something to be taken into account.